Come, Nerevar, come. Look upon the realms of oblivion, each of which is headed by a Daedric Prince. These Daedric Princes have their separate dimensions, with some more livable than others. I wouldn't venture there if I were you, as they are unpredictable. Moonshadow is a plane of oblivion governed by Azura. It is a twilight country of shades and half-thoughts that is inaccessible from Nern, although this has not always been the case. Morian Zenus visited the plane while in a meditative state. His apprentice scribed the experience. It is a giant garden full of roses, a city of silver and breathtaking vistas brimming with waterfalls, flowers, and majestic trees where the wind and rain carry heady perfumes and the colors blur. The goddess herself resides in a palace of roses. The realm holds such beauty that it makes mortals half blind. It can't be that impressive as winged twilights live there and they do not look particularly beautiful. Attribution's share, formerly known as Snake Mount, is the plane of oblivion belonging to the Daedric Prince Boethia, the Daedric Prince of Plots. The plane has been renamed many times by Boethia for unknown reasons and is described as a country of labyrinthine policies and betrayals. It is known to be full of many maze gardens and twisted towers. The realm is used to host the Tournament of the Ten Bloods, in which a champion is taken from each of the ten races of Tamriel and are pitted against each other in fights to the death. Whoever wins the tournament is awarded the sword Goldbrand and the honorary title Chosen One. The final round of the Dragonstar Arena takes place in this realm. Leave it to Boethia to create an overglorified arena as her realm, full of tournaments that do not honor the Sixth House and the Tribe Unmourned. The Fields of Regret is a realm of oblivion. Created and ruled over by Clavicus Vile, the Daedric Prince of Deals. Yes, Nerevar, you will regret coming here. It appears as an idyllic countryside, dotted with merchant utopias, fields of white clovers, woodland meadows, twisted foliage and odd melted looking places. The air smells of both perfume and rotting flesh, while the sky is blue with cottony clouds and greenish gray streaks that stain the atmosphere. Due to Clavicus Vile's weakness, a city might break away from the realm alongside Umbra and start flying around across Tamriel. Oh, you thought by skipping my realm, you were not going to get my attention? Well, let me tell you about the Shivering Isles. Take off me, boy! It's crazy! We have Mania, a happy-go-lucky place where all the fun stuff related to madness happens and brightens up the universe. Then you have Dementia, where it is a lot more bleaker and the inhabitants have truly retreated to the dark crevice of their broken minds. I like them that way. My realm used to belong to Jigaleg, and uh, he did destroy it several times, but then again he always reverted back to the old Sheogorath, and the old Sheogorath had to rebuild everything from the ground up. Oh, did I mention the Golden saints and the dark seducers? They only add to the aesthetic to my realm. Oh, of course, how can I forget? The cheese! The cheese, Dagoth! All kinds of cheese! Apocrypha is the realm of Hermaeus Mora, the Daedric Prince of Fate and Knowledge. Many who come here seeking forbidden knowledge remain forever. Apocrypha can only be accessed by reading the Black Books while in Solstheim. There are seven Black Books. As with Hermaeus Mora, Apocrypha is always changing and never constant. Its environment is filled with hidden and forbidden knowledge and dangerous to the unwary. This infinite plane of reality is dominated by an endless, roiling sea of toxic green liquid where giant oily tentacles slither and writhe about the waves, whipping at anyone who gets too close. Sounds like an anime plot, Nerevar. What little solid ground there is consists of several archipelagos and cathedral-like buildings composed of heavily weathered stone, connected by constantly shifting bridges built of greasy black metal. Several bridges and hallways even move on their own, stretching and bending like tentacles to render other areas accessible or hinder intruders. The most prominent feature of Apocrypha, however, is the overwhelming abundance of books that make up Hermaeus Mora's library. Giant stacks of reading material break the surface of the poisonous sea. Numerous shelves that line the halls and walls are literally crammed to bursting with ancient scrolls and smoldering journals. Heaps of books and papers litter the floors, and even entire buildings are constructed from twisting stacks of books. These books are protected and maintained by the Seekers and Lurkers, who act as the principal security force of Apocrypha. The hunting grounds are the realms of Hercene in his plane of oblivion. Being seemingly endless, 
The plain features puzzling rooms and mazes inhabited by vicious creatures such as bears, wolves, were creatures, and Deidre. Many of the creatures that inhabit the plain are much larger than those that inhabit the mortal realm. The beasts roam the heavenly lands, hunting prey for the rest of eternity. Those who have contracted lycanthropy will also be sent to the hunting grounds after death to hunt with her sign for all eternity. It is also believed that any Daedric cult that worships her scene will also hunt with her scene after death. The spirits of animals from the mortal plane are a common sight within the hunting grounds, as her scene brings them in to please his followers. Anyone who dies in this realm remains in it forever. Geographically, the plain is made up mostly of dense woodland and vast grasslands and plains. Mortals entering these realms are typically hunted down by the inhabitants. It can be described as an endless forest. Herds of antelopes with twisting horns inhabit this area, as well large six feet high. Cattle with an almost equal shoulder and horn span. If you are enjoying this sermon, please consider raising your thumb, subscribing to my sermons, and writing on the parchment down below. The Deadlands is the name given to the realm of the Daedric Prince Merun's Dagon. It is the manifestation of the floor is lava. Formed to be an expression of Dagon's destructive sphere, the Deadlands are an inhospitable nightmare of lava and molten rock, pocked with islands where Dagon's servants, the Dremora, carry out his works in immense spike towers. The sky perpetually storms, the natural astronomy of the Deadlands perpetually burning red, casting dark shadows over the entire realm. Among the Daedric creatures that roam the wastes are Scamps, Clanfear, Daedroths, Flame Atronox, Frost Atronox, Storm Atronox, Spider Daedra, and Shivali. Native flora include Harada roots, Bloodgrass, and Spittle Plant. An Oblivion Gate that opens from the Deadlands appears as a spiked, molten, red and black portal in the shape of the O character of the Daedric alphabet. Generally, it is a desolate realm of a false god. The Spiral Skein, also known as Mephala's Web, or simply Mephala's Realm, is the plane of oblivion ruled by Mephala. Inaccessible to mortals, the realm of Mephala is believed by most to be intricate and woven together in the form of a web wheel, which is centered around the tower known as the Pillar Palace of Mephala, though its true name is too awful to be uttered. Between the tower and the edges of the wheel, there are eight spokes. These spokes or strands are known as the eight strands of Skane, for which each are based on sins such as procreation or assassination, Mephala's category of ruling. The colored rooms are a collection of realms belonging to Meridia, inhabited by the Auroran Daedra. Little is known about this realm save that the Aurorans are native to this plane. Also, probably the moment you step into this realm, Meridia starts giving her a new hand touches the beacon speech. What a grand and intoxicating innocence. The colored rooms are where the spirit of Umaril the Unfeathered fled when Pelinor Whitestrake slew him. The dreadful oblivion plain of Cold Harbor is a place of death, despair, and infinite cruelty. It is ruled by Molag Baal, the lord of brutality and domination, a Daedric prince dedicated to enslaving all the mortals of Nurn. This Enwa had an affair with the false tribunal god Vivek, and you expect me to respect him? I am a god. How do you expect a god to forgive? As Molag Baal's sphere of influence is domination and the enslavement of mortals, and because he is known as the god of schemes, any mortal entering the realm is captured, enslaved, and turned into one of Molag Baal's soul-shriven, soulless slaves, laboring for eternity under Molag Baal's command. Cold Harbor is known for its vast farm tool pens and laborers. Bleak, dead, rocky chasms, and twisted, abandoned ruins, some ripped straight out of Nurn, such as the Argonian village of Haj Uxith. Daedra are known to wander the realm and to be among the servants to Molag Baal. Some Daedra in Cold Harbor include Harvesters, Dremora, Scamps, Soul Shriven, and Atronox, though there are a vast number more. The Scuttling Void, also known as the Dark Behind the World to the Khajiit, is the plain of oblivion ruled by Namira. Very little is known about it beyond its name, as it is claimed that no man, myrrh, nor beast has ever ventured there and returned. The Dromathra are said to originate from here, and a tear between the two realms occurred at the maw of Lorkaj. 
It is a cold realm that has grim forges and bent benches where the Dromathra arm themselves. Evergloam is the mysterious realm of Nocturnal and seems to have some connection with the luck that thieves seem to enjoy. The Evergloam is dark and foggy, containing gloomy and dangerous creatures. The realm consists of a primary plane and several sub-realms, but these are thought to be constantly shifting, with different mortals perceiving them in different ways. The trees cast long, dark shadows. Honestly, Nerevar, Nocturnal, Namira, Mephala, and Vermina are all unoriginal and have realms resembling each other. The Pits is a realm of oblivion created and ruled by the Daedric Prince of Pestilence, Periite. It is here in which the lowest orders of oblivion are guarded. With a few exceptions, the realm is usually unreachable via mortal devices. And due to the lack of accessibility, the majority of information regarding this realm is derived from the reports of other princes. The myriad realms of revelry are a series of over 1,000 or even 100,000 pocket realms created and ruled over by the Daedric Prince Sanguine. The realms are used as pleasure pockets where guests can personally customize them to a great latitude as to meet the needs and desires of its visitants. Sanguine does not enforce absolute control over the realms as it is his nature to indulge his visitors. Quagmire, also called the Dreamstride, the realm of nightmares, is the plane of oblivion associated with the Daedric Prince Vermina. Every time lightning strikes, reality shifts to another horrifying vision. It could be anything, from a dark castle, a den of terrifying beasts, a moonlit swamp, or even a casket in which one sees oneself buried. Well, Nerevar, thank you for listening to this sermon. Please don't forget to honor the sixth house and the tribe unmourned by raising your thumbs subscribing to my sermons, and writing on the parchment down below. I want to thank my patrons, Connor Runda, Tanya Davis, Unoriginal Username, Janelle Rambo, and Silky Johnson.